what's going on it is warming up now the bass are spawning a lot of parts of the country they're done in some places but right in the middle of it for most parts of the country it's warm a lot of the bad weather hopefully that we've been played with plagued with this entire year is behind us it'll be stable from here on out for the most part the water temperature is up there high enough the fish are far enough along where bad weather shouldn't hurt it as bad as it has earlier in this year but today we're going to talk about my three must-have bed fishing baits these are three that if i'm going bed fishing they will be on the front deck all the time or even just fishing around in the spawn if i'm not actively bed fishing all that type of stuff so but before we get into that i want to say this video is sponsored by shop carl's there's actually a web page now you can go and see all of my picks my baits that i actually use all the time there that shop carl sells they'll be on one web page you can see all my 13 fishing baits spro baits 13 fishing reels rods all that type of stuff and you can also go to shop cars to get a free trial membership right now and that gives you early access to new baits early access to new colors of baits and it gets you updated and expedited shipping so after all that we're going to jump right into the rods let's start off with one that you cannot go fishing without in the spring this is a wacky rig stick worm i'll use a stick worm style bait and then i'll use a more of a like traditional finesse worm or you know just a six inch straight tail worm whatever you want to call it just a normal worm that everybody throws floating worm whatever you want to call it use that as a wacky rig also i'll use both if i'm fishing extremely shallow i don't really like the stick worm type of type of bait i want something that falls a little bit slower like that more traditional style worm but the rod i throw this on is a seven foot three medium fast this is the 13 fishing envy just got it on obviously an upside down reel oh spinning reel nobody likes those do they but catch a lot of really big fish on that i've always caught a lot of really big fish on a spin rod it's just something that you can't live without now you have to have them all the time seems to me like our lakes are just getting clear all the time it seems like it's getting more a lot of pressure lakes are getting clear the fish are getting a little bit more educated and having that eight or ten pound leader it may make a big difference but anyways i have 12 pound sunline x plasma braid 10 pound sunline shooter the reason i use 10 pound if I could get away with eight, I would, but we have a lot of lay down trees, stumps, all that type of stuff that we are, at, you know, pitching this bait around. So I want to make sure I have that 10 pound test so I don't break any off. You know, eight pound test is strong. You're not going to break one off on that unless you get around cover. He wraps you up around stump or a dock post or anything like that. You can break eight pound test. I just want to go up to have a little bit of 10, but that's the number one. If I'm going down the bank, kind of blind fishing, just casting at targets that I think they might be spawning on, this is what I will use. And then we'll jump straight from that to another one that I do not go fishing without this time of year. This is the worm I was just talking about that I also wacky rig. This is actually the 13 fishing BFF. This is just a six inch, you know, straight tail worm. This one has a ton of action. I really like this one. It's got a little bit thicker head on it than some of the other ones. A little bit more weight to it. I can throw it a little bit further and still has really good action in the water. As you can tell, it's very, very limp. But this is just something that I'm going to do kind of the same. When I'm actively fishing down the bank, not really looking at fish, but I will throw both of these baits also when I'm looking at the fish. If I think that that fish is in a mood, like sometimes the female will sit off the bed and you can throw this right in front of them and they'll, you get them to react to it. You know, a lot of times you won't see those fish and you'll just throw this down the bank and you'll have one come out and eat it. This is a very fun way to fish, a very visual technique. I watch this worm come all the way back to the boat like the entire time. It never gets out of my sight. I let it get down to where I can barely see it, and I just want to kind of almost do a walk the dog type of action with it and make that bait come back over the cover, over the bank, wherever I think those fish might be spawning or staging or post spawn or fry garters or whatever. This is where I'm going to throw this type of worm. Quick rundown of the setup. This is a four alt offset round bin, just a standard old school gamakatsu four alt round bin. I mean, that's a hook that has caught millions of bass and it's this hook I have a lot of confidence in. If I feel like a fish is about to bite, this is the bait that I want to pick up because I've got nothing but a super thin worm, a big four alt hook, and I've got it tied to 18 pound or 20 pound line. So bait I have a lot of confidence in that I'm going to land a fish an extremely high percentage of the time when I'm throwing this rig. So it's one where if I go to a bed fish that I know is about to bite, this is one of the first things that I want to put in a bed. But have it on 18 pound sunline shooter right now, just so I can throw it just a little bit further. You know, I want it to be, and the water I'm fishing is pretty clear. So I want it to look pretty natural. I could go down to something even smaller, like a 14 or a 16, but I am throwing it up in trees and grass and all type of stuff like that. So I do like the 18 or the 20. Like I said, right now we have 18. This is a seven foot three, medium fast, 13 fishing envy. You know, all, the only plastic that you have to penetrate is a quarter inch 
of a super skinny straight tail worm. So you don't have to have a medium heavy, you don't have to throw this on a super heavy rod, nothing like that. Something kind of finessey, I call a 7.3 medium finessey. But for how I normally fish, that is a more of a lighter power rod than I'm typically gonna, gonna throw. But 7.3 medium on this rig, eight to one gear ratio reel. You know, I always work this bait with the rod. So whenever I do that, I wanna have the high speed reel I can, cause all I'm doing is picking up slack. I'll twitch that bait, pick up just a couple inches of slack, twitch it back the other way, pick up a couple inches of slack. I just want it to be as fast as possible. And a lot of times them fish will eat this bait and run so fast, it's unbelievable. Especially on spotted bass lakes. They'll come eat this thing and they'll be 10 foot away before you can even reel down and set the hook because they hit it going so fast. So on a high speed gear ratio reel, and that's the setup on the old floating worm, whatever you want to call it, you know? Now, this is the bed fishing bait. This is the one, maybe we should make this four parts. I don't know, four, four rods, I don't know. But this is the bed fish bait that I've been using almost exclusively all year. This is the 13 Fishing Invader. I have a white one on right here. If I had to only pick one color, it'd probably be collard green. I wouldn't want to pick the white one for the most part bed fishing, but I use white a lot because I really like seeing my bait. I like to be able to work those fish and get, those, get them a little bit riled up and I can tell exactly where my bait is in their bed so I can, you know, make it the bait move if I need them to and I can just always have an eye on my bait and if the fish is looking at it or not. When you're pitching a green pumpkin or a collard green or a more natural color, anything like that, a lot of times you lose track of your bait. That's just, you're just going to. You're just gonna to have to kind of understand where your bait is based on where you cast it and where you've seen it last. So you just can't get quite as good of an idea. So I like to throw the white. It's more fun for me to throw the white. So if I'm fun fishing, I almost always throw the white. But here's, y'all can probably see this since I've been talking, how much these arms and these little legs have been kicking. This is the rabbit ear tail from 13, but you can see how much these move. And when I've got that bait in the bed and I'm shaking it a little bit, I can see those legs, you know, always moving a little bit. And I just feel like it gives me a little bit of confidence that it's kind of irritating and agitating those bass quite a bit whenever it's in that bed. So that's one of the baits that I've really grown to love for bed fishing when I was on Santee. I think I caught almost every single bass that I weighed in. I might have caught one on a wacky rig. Other than that, every single bass I weighed in was on this bait right here. Typical setup for me on this is going to be a quarter ounce weight. That to me is just something that it doesn't fall too fast and it doesn't fall too slow. A lot of times I want to be efficient and get it in there as fast as I possibly can, but I don't want it to just be like go straight down to the bottom. I want it to kind of linger in those fish's face for a little bit, especially if I hop it. I don't want the bait to just like rock it back down to the bottom, even though I have had times where I've picked up my half ounce flipping rod and flip it in there and catch them extremely quickly because that bait does fall down. That's usually a little bit more when those fish are suspended over the bed, you know, when they're deep on a corner of a seawall or something, when they suspend up high and they're just kind of guarding, you know, from, from above, that fast fall sometimes will get them to bite. They just see it going straight down to their bed really, really quickly. But this right here is the quarter ounce. This is my standard one. It's a five volt Gamakatsu straight shank hook. And then I vary the rod that I use this on tremendously. Like when I was on Santee, I wanted to have a seven foot six heavy because I'm trying to I'm trying to catch you know seven pounders constantly. So I want to have a rod that's very strong, very powerful. If I'm in heavy cover, I want to be able to get those fish's heads up extremely quickly and kind of just winch them to the boat and go ahead and swing them in. 22 pound shooter, that's the standard for me. Whenever I'm bed fishing, I just want to make sure that it's not something where you have to finesse them. If I'm gonna finesse them and use one of these other two baits, this right here is just straight irritate them until they're willing to bite. And when you get them to bite, whatever you can do to land those fish as often as possible is what I'm going to do. So 22 pound Sunline Shooter, that's gonna be the line for me because I'm not going to break that line. I have a lot of confidence in that line. Even whenever I'm trying to swing in a five, six, seven pounder in the boat, don't wanna swing sevens too often, but fives and sixes, swing those pretty regularly on this line. This is a seven foot six heavy. If I'm open water not around cover at all not fishing for super huge fish like if i if i'm not actively trying to catch a 30 pound bag or which you're always trying to catch a 30 pound bag but some lakes that's what it takes you know like like was on santee and it was like 17 a day was not even that good so you're trying to catch three and a half plus pound fish I want, i'm gonna go with the seven foot six heavy rod if i'm fishing for lakes where 13, 14 pounds is good. I'm fishing for a lot of two pounders, two and a half, three pounders. I'll go with a seven foot three heavy. You know, that's the rod. It just to me, it's a little bit more comfortable. It's a little bit lighter. I can move it a little bit faster, get a little bit better response out of the rod whenever I'm shaking it and stuff like that. So that's, I'll go with a seven foot three hit, medium heavy whenever I'm fishing more open water, not quite as big a fish. Seven, six heavy though is what I have on right now because we're around a bunch of wood and stuff. Same deal, 
8 to 1 gear ratio reel. The reel I use is the Inception. That's what's on all of my rods, the Inception. To me, it's the most comfortable in my hand, and I love the way it casts. I've, I've tried all the 13 fishing reels, and to me, I don't know why, I just really was partial to this one. But the Inception, it is available at Shop Carl's. 8 to 1 because when you hook that fish, you want to be in absolute control. You want to be able to pick up line if you need to. And another thing is, when you're pitching to that bed, you want to be able to get your bait back as fast as possible and then pitch it back in there again. Because when you get that fish a little bit agitated, you don't want to give him 25, 30 seconds to calm down. You want to get right back in there again, let him see your bait again and get back on it again. So that's going to be my setup for this. Another thing that I do a lot is we got a little bit of stained water. Anything that's, you know, heavy cover, the fish might be spawning, or if it's really, really clear and it's cloudy out and you can't really see, they might be spawning in there in five, four, five, six foot of water. I'll take this bait and I'll pitch it on a quarter, but I'll have, I won't use a white if I'm not actually looking at it. And I will peg it. Right now it's not pegged because I want that bait in that bed, the weight to separate from the bait and then the bait to kind of flutter down slowly after that bait hits the bottom. But if I'm just blind pitching around where I think beds are with a creature bait, I'm gonna use a natural color, like a collard green, boss nugget, something like that. I'm gonna peg it and I'm gonna pitch it around anywhere I think a bass will be spawning. And I'm gonna fish it really slow, which is really hard for me, but that's what I'll do. But that's my three must have bed fishing baits. You know, I've been using this exact same three bed fishing baits for a long 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 time i will mix in obviously a drop shot every now and then or something like that just depending on kind of where you're at in the country and kind of what mood the fish are in or kind of what kind of a like bait fish is kind of attacking their bed or what kind of you know things are trying to eat the eggs out of the bed you got to kind of imitate that but for where i'm at and where i've pretty much been these three baits really do cover it. I'm pretty simple with it. I know a lot of people flip jigs in there. I don't like to flip jigs because I foul hook them too often on a jig. I don't know why. I just seem to. So that's my three must-have bed fishing baits for the spawn. I appreciate y'all watching. Better go try to find us a couple more on bed.